In other words, this training gives you hands-on reality. Yeah, because in my household, my mother worked seven days. My father worked seven Same days. Thing. And it was just funny how you would see my mother would drop one child here, one child there, one child here, come home, cook while you're doing homework, and she's washing at the same time. And so now, now I can so travail la givalis me bui po ane to have yana do homework. Passe, I can do that, and that's all because that's what I was taught at home. Yes, but I didn't saw too. have to do it. It was your choice whether you wanted to learn how to do it or not learn to do it. Oh, so in other words, that you know nobody ever commands you to do it. No, you, you weren't commanded to come and hold you the just chicken get while into I cook. The, uh, the routine of the house. Oh, let me let me help my mother. Or there you know, you go. While, while she comes here. Uh, before she comes, probably... Uh, before the, she comes, the... you have to sweep. But she did enforce Saturday's cleaning days. So you would know... Lo it was a schedule. Laundry, market, clean the dresser, fix your clothes. Monday's a new day, a new week. At times you would say, Oh, this is my only day off. I'm going to watch TV. But as I got older, the same routine that I had, my children had. Oh, so you know what? You pass on. Yes. The, the discipline that you have, you have learned. Yes. I can have some observation on how the t teenagers are living at home do not really appreciate what they have in terms of love and attention. I can give an order, but I give this order, you know, a, by virtue of love. Uh, in other words, like, you know, well, I want you to come home a certain time. You go with a we go out with a friend, I want to know exactly, you know, you who going? are you going out with? And then, uh, in case that something happens, in take that, you know, I know who to call. This is a way to, to uh, tell you that parents usually are concerned about the behavior of their children, what they will become, a certain discipline, and let alone that trying to duplicate what they have done from their, they have learned, I would say, from their household, from their own parents. You have to have a certain reflection of your culture. If you are an intellectual, you want your children to be, you know, not come out like, you know, a, a, a dropout. And then uh, if you are religious, and then uh, you want your children to, to know God. In other words, the parents are always after the children, like, you know, bombarding sometimes with orders, with, uh, uh, with what they want them to do. Or sometimes they might overdo it, I would say, uh, trying to tell her, I would say, the child into something. Okay, I am against that. However, isn't it necessary or isn't it really important that parents, for instance, stand as a, not only as a backup, but as a mentor, some of them like, you know, dictate, some of them show by example in a softer way. You know, that's a soft, what I call a soft power which is sometimes as strong as the whip. You know okay. what I mean? You do it and uh, it's fine. Beautiful girl. You don't do it, then you know, you see my, you see my car. Ah, then, mm -hmm. uh, but regardless the, the method that I would use, I think it is, the purpose is one thing. How do you see parents' direction, directions? It, toward their children, trying to put them in a certain way. Is it wrong or is it something they call like, you know, self-education? Well, there's different aspects to look at it. And being that Diana has been studying psychology, you can tell a child, you can mold a child, but the child has a mind of his own. Exactly. It's best that you do it in a softer tone. When I say a softer tone, you can be a friend and a parent. But it's just, there's a limit to the friendship, but you're unlimited to being a parent. And when I say that, 
you can tell your child not to do, not to do, not to do. But when you say not to do, this child is going to do. I can remember as young as 17 asking, oh, can I get a tattoo? No. But mom, you have a tattoo. Oh, I have it, but I regret it. You have to give me the opportunity to get it and regret it. So what did I do? I got the tattoo. And, and hide it. And hide it. And that was the worst thing that they viewed of me. But in the longer aspect, there had to be a standstill. Like, let's stop talking about it because she's influenced by the tattoo, not only because of her friends or society, but as a parent, you have the tattoo. Yeah. So let's let her get it. Or rather, wouldn't it be more psychologically more how would I say that I missed the word psychologically that would be better if you sit down and explain I had my tattoo this is true yes but you see I might have other things also that you don't want to have right so that was one experience in, in life but I think that's what we lack exactly and that's a that's a relationship yeah that's a that's this whole situation. It's a, I think it's a relationship. What I lacked and what I appreciate, I appreciate my parents. The way they brought me up, the sacrifices they made for me, I definitely appreciate that. But you, they lacked communication with me. So because of that, I didn't see all their sacrifices as rewards or sacrifices as they were making for me. That's the whole situation. Like you need a you need a relationship. You need a communication. You can't just dictate to your child and hope they come out for the best. You can be an intellectual, but speak and spend time with your child. Let them know that you are an intellectual, so they can become one. Don't don't just because just because you're an intellectual doesn't make it seem like the kid will just be no. Because once you become command mode, your child becomes a robot at home, but outside in the real world. Your child's going to want to experience life as it comes. The child may not say, well, my mom says I must cross at the light. You might want to think crazy and say, well, if I cross in the middle, let's see if it's considered jaywalking or if I'm going to get a ticket. So parents, as in my home, our parents worked so hard. We were sheltered. We got the best of everything. Education, clothing, your first car, you got it. But communication was not the key. In our home, it was, I say, you do, no ifs, no ands, no buts. Which made you actually terrified of your parents. And you knew, I have to have this certain stature. You know, if I go out, I have to know how to communicate with an adult. I have to sit a certain way, because that's what you were taught at home. But if you go out with your friends and you're sitting in McDonald's, I don't have to. But did you really respect those rules anyway? But you did because you, did. you never knew who you would encounter in the street, on the bus, in the church, on the dollar van, in the mall. You had to. So now, since Diana, do you think about like you know the, the lack of communication? I just think it was a different method. It was the wrong method. It was the right heart they had. My parents, again, I appreciate them. They sacrificed for me. At this age right now, in reality, paying bills and living life, I can see how they sacrificed for me to have the best. That I totally appreciate and understand. But it's not as... This truth right now, again, we're lacking communication. It's the same thing, just different methods. We have old school, this is new school. At the end, I think the results are going to be the same. The kids are going to have to grow up on their own, realize things on their own, and at a certain age, they may look back and reflect back and say, you know what? I was I, sheltered. I was sheltered. Or they could say, I wasn't. I was neglected. You know, I blame my parents or whatever. And they have the right. Which is correct. And they, and they, have, the, and they have that right. Okay. Actually, I think I mentioned something before about self education when well, you say that you know they have to realize something on their own to recognize it on their own to discover it on their own 
But sometimes the parents might, they see through what might happen. After two, it's three. After three, it's four. It's not five. And you never come back to two. And so once you make that mistake, and definitely, actually, uh, for instance, I've seen a parent talking about, talking to a, a, his child, saying, listen, I don't want somebody to just blow the horn and then you walk out, mommy, I'm going out. Whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's some, just a, a date, whether it's just a friend, it's always good to let that person outside know that Mr. Victor is here and Mrs. Diana is here. Good morning, Mrs. Diana. I'm going out with uh, the, the, the Jojo and then so forth. You understand? That's so this is a question of protection. This is not regulation or control. So, but prior to see, that, there is a lack of communication. How do you see it now, uh, psychologically? If if you would leave that child on her own or his own, and then make a mistake, who's to blame? Going back to your first situation scenario, if I had an, it's two scenarios. If I had an open relationship with my parents and said, I have a friend, I like this person, I want to go out on a lunch or a dinner with this person, this is their name or such and such, and they understood that and said, okay, I give you permission, that's fine. They understand once more, I'm making my own choice. Okay. This is my friend. I'm introducing you to my friend. This is part of, I'm growing up. Accept it. Okay, a different scenario would be, I don't care who your friend is, or, you know, or who the person you're is. You're not going out anyway. You're not going out anyways. You are this age, you are 16, you're in my house, I say no. But then you also at have that to point, look at it at as... That, at that point, we don't have that relationship to the point where I can introduce you to my friends. Because I know you would just cut them off. So or you why look at it as I'm afraid to introduce my date to mom and dad because my date has piercings. Even a date or friend. My date is wearing or, sneakers. Or like a friend. Your parent would say, "Well, what kind of date is that if he's wearing sneakers and you're wearing shoes?" So it's all on who will my parent accept? Exactly. Even as friends as well. Like that's a date, but even as a friend, let's just say I had a platonic friend, but he had piercings. He had, you know, all the these jeans. the jeans and everything. My parents would be, no, you're not to be with this person. What am I going to do? He said, I'm honking. I'll meet you up the block. <laughs> and we can go wherever we want to go. And that's where the lack of communication comes from. Because if I have to meet you around the corner, it's where I cannot talk to my parents. We don't have that bond where I can say, honk the horn. Come, G, come inside. Meet my mom and dad. So there is a, I can feel that there is an acceptance of a culture. Yes, yes mm -hmm. it is. Whereas in, uh, a child can understand it's like my children.